Making a game is difficult and complex. With that being said, there's a disconnect in the current video game industry, specifically in the console market. For most of us gamers, we do not ask for too much. We want a good looking game with good performance. If the developers want to offer a graphics and performance mode, then that's totally fine. But I think gamers have made themselves clear. Make sure the performance is good, especially in a performance focused mode. Unfortunately, this is where the disconnect occurs. In general, what developers want and what gamers want do not line up. Certainly game developers want their game to be the best it can be, but there is a fine line between a game that overachieves and one that is heavily compromised. Consoles can do a lot, but some graphical features should simply be left out of console games. One feature in particular unnecessarily kills console games performance. The feature is none other than ray tracing. Ray tracing is an algorithm that simulates lighting in a realistic way by extending rays into the image, allowing the rays to bounce off surfaces. Essentially, reflections and lighting look incredible. If implemented well, it can totally transform how a game looks, such as in the game Control. So what's the issue with it? Ray tracing is incredibly taxing on PCs and consoles and uses many resources. This means that it can absolutely tank performance in a game that would otherwise run well. A great recent example is Rise of the Ronin on PS5. It has three graphics modes, performance mode, quality mode, and ray tracing mode. Notably, the quality mode is a dynamic 1440p at 30fps, while the ray tracing mode is a dynamic 1080p at 30fps. A huge difference in resolution and ultimately performance. So is the ray tracing life changing? Absolutely not. Lighting is slightly different and a little better, but the cost of implementing ray tracing here is not worth it. Remember, this slight change causes the resolution to drop from 1440 to 1080p. Another great example when it released was Resident Evil Village. For the current gen consoles, its regular mode hit 4K60 and was incredibly stable. But there was an option for turning ray tracing on. The ray tracing mode remains at 4K, only the differences between the two modes are, well, just about nothing. And with almost nothing changing, the game then runs between 45 to 60 FPS. Given it's almost entirely the same, it goes to show how taxing ray tracing is. Now you can imagine what happens if ray tracing is implemented more and not optimized. But luckily, these games give you graphics options, so you do not need to use the ray tracing if you do not want to. Unfortunately, not all developers create their game in this way. Large problems are created when a game is made utilizing ray tracing from the ground up. For example, if ray trace lighting is baked into the game from its inception, and it's the only lighting method used, then no matter the graphics mode, the game will have ray tracing in it. This means the devs are stuck between a rock and a hard place if their game's performance is unstable. In honor of its DLC releasing, I will discuss Final Fantasy XVI since it's the perfect example. Its performance mode is incredibly unstable, with it hitting between 35 to 50 FPS running around the world, and an unstable 60 FPS in battle. This game has ray traced lighting, so you'd think the easiest way to boost performance would be to remove the ray tracing and use a different lighting method, one that uses much less resources and graphical power. It would make sense, have ray tracing be in the 4K graphics mode only and remove it for the performance mode. But in reality, the developers are stuck. They cannot remove the ray tracing because the game was made from the ground up with it baked in. So instead, they need to tone down everything else. To reach 60 FPS in battles, they heavily reduce the resolution to as low as native 720p, largely reduce the level of detail in the background, and remove NPCs and enemies not in the battle. Even with this, it's still not a stable 60 FPS. FPS. In other words, the game will never be stable in performance mode. There are of course other games stuck with the same issue, but luckily many developers are smart enough to make ray tracing a separate mode. Unfortunately, the problem remains. Ray tracing is almost never worth it in console gaming, and I believe the situation is about to get worse. The largest release within the next year and a half will be Grand Theft Auto 6. When dissecting the trailer, Digital Foundry and others concluded GTA 6 is likely using some sort of ray tracing. This will be a console exclusive release to begin, so if they are correct, then yes, the game will have ray tracing on consoles. More recently, Sony has stated to game developers that ray tracing should be a focus on the PS5 Pro. Once again, the focus is on the wrong goal. 
In particular, Sony should be saying to devs, make sure the PS5 Pro can always run games at 1440p at 60fps, or even 4K 60fps within reason. That's what gamers want. Instead, their focus is on ray tracing, which will unnecessarily tank performance. Moreover, it puts pressure on developers to start including ray tracing when they would not otherwise. Developers only have a limited time and budget to make a game, so if they need to focus on a ray trace version for the PS5 Pro, and to make the same game playable on the base console versions, it is adding a ton more work. This is ultimately leading to a scenario where some devs will just keep ray tracing present in every graphics option, which as previously stated would not be great. Alternatively, devs might stick with just two graphics options. One would be the performance mode, while the other would be graphics mode with ray tracing. Regardless, it seems likely that Sony and other companies would say, if the ray tracing mode does not run well on the base consoles, then so what? There is the performance mode, or buy a pro so you can have better performance. It comes down to budget and time. Think about it from a large game company's perspective, one that is in charge of devs. I'm sure you can imagine a company like EA telling their devs, why make three different graphics modes when you can just make two? From a financial and business perspective, two will suffice even if the customer is losing out. Now I am not saying devs can't do a good job with ray tracing. Doom Eternal has fantastic ray tracing and ungodly performance. Spider-Man 2's implementation on PS5 is great as well. But unfortunately, most of the time, ray tracing is not implemented well or is too taxing on the systems, or even both. With the giants like Sony and Rockstar seemingly doubling down on ray tracing for the future, I cannot help but be pessimistic. Now I am sure Rockstar will implement it well, but if everyone else starts trying to follow suit, then it could set trends in the industry that result in even worse performing games and unrealistic expectations by both game companies and gamers. Ray tracing should never be the goal. Good performance and good resolution should be, and developers are having enough trouble even achieving that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.